I want to talk about the scariest thing that could happen to you while you're playing fighting games. And it actually has nothing to do with actually playing. I guess it kind of does. Actually, it does. Okay, scratch that. It does. So today I want to talk about the character crisis. So normally what I like to do when we talk about definitions of stuff in fighting games is to pull up the fighting game glossary by Lord Infill. But this is the first time since I started using this as a reference for videos where there is no such definition on the glossary. So the definition I came up with is a character crisis is a time where you are doubting your character. When you're doubting your character, it affects absolutely everything about your fighting game experience. You're going to feel terrible about most situations. You're going to be complaining about absolutely everything. Depending on what type of person you are, you might actually overlook things that are good about your character. You start posting on social media, just buff XYZ, blah, 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 blah. You've probably seen this before. So why does this matter? Why am I even talking about this? I mean, one, I went through this in this game hard, 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 hard. It's not the first time, so I kind of knew what to do, but I definitely went through it. I've seen other people go through it in many games, and there's a new generation of fighting games coming out starting basically next month with Street Fighter VI, right? And Strive in particular, uh, I think... I really have problems identifying why. I think it's just because of how much bigger of a game it is compared to like Exerd, but I feel like it's so much more extreme. It kind of reminds me of how people would talk about teams and characters and Dragon Ball fighters. So these are fighting games, but fighting games are like your RPG because you are the input, right? You pick the character, you're the one who's controlling the character, you're the one who's picking to do X, Y, Z in situations. People pick characters for a lot of reasons, right? They vibe with the character or they have a familiar playstyle like grappler, rushdown, zoning, maybe they're horny for the character, maybe like cops, there's all sorts of reasons why people pick characters. So the connection you have, whatever reason you have for playing a character, when you start doubting your character, it affects your whole experience and switching to another character is like breaking that connection you have with your original character. The connection to the character is super, super important because if we were only to use like logic, right, for like why should you play XYZ character, then we're gonna have people picking characters like Potemkin or characters like Anji. Logically, everyone should play whoever is the best at the time. So if you're talking about Guilty Gear Strive, it'd be like Launch Soul and Launch Chip. But this belief in your character is what drives people to push their characters to the limit no matter where the character is as far as strength. So what do you do when things go wrong and you start having a character crisis? So normally people do one of two things. Either they figure out how to handle the thing that's making them doubt their character or they switch. And people really do number one first. Like, like in the fighting game community, there's so much talk about adapting and figuring out situations. And it's, it's really, really common for people to just figure something out every now and then you'll run up you'll run into something that kind of bothers you so i had a thing once about biken of how she can't combo off standing hits off her best button this is like far slash and this thing was really bothering me because people wouldn't really care about getting hit that's probably been the thing that i have complained about the most in my experience in strive is like moves that are good but people don't care about getting hit by so people would kind of just run into my stuff and this doesn't really lead into a combo, which means like scrambles could happen. But there, there are solutions to this, right? I could press different buttons in the same spot, like buttons that lead into combos, or at least encourage people to pick different moves. So like in this case, so now he maybe will not run up and do like far slash, close slash, whatever. Next time they'll pick this maybe, which means I can go back to this. And because he's crouching or I counter hit him, then I get a combo. So there was actually something there uh, to address my pain point. But in some cases, the doubt keeps piling up over time. This is basically what happened to be with Milia in this game, right? So I played her at the first major tournament for this, this game. I played her at EVO Online. I played her in a bunch of big offline tournaments, like the first CEO. I played her at the first Summer Jam. I played her at the first Frosty Faustings for this game. I played her at a bunch of tournaments and each tournament, little things 
just kept like piling up. So for example, at EVO 2021, people used a lot of characters. Part of EVO is like luck. So like, for example, I ran into two axles back to back. That's very good for me. It's a great match for Milia. But at CEO 2021, by the time we got there, uh, a couple of things were happening. So one, when the game came out, everyone thought Nagoriyuki sucked. Then Hotashi won EVO, then people were like, oh, no. Nagoryuki is secretly really really good and people a lot of people started to use him in a 900 man event the first CEO in December 2021 I played five Nagoryuki players in a row so from my round one until like winners round five or six I played Nagoryuki non-stop it was not a good matchup for her at the time and it was a grind it was a grind of a tournament run and each one I was just like dude like I am hitting this guy a lot. They are, I'm not saying doing random stuff, but the threat of me dying is just so, so high. All I could see was my correct choices and incorrect choices leading into loss. That's not a good thing. And it's not that I'm saying that, oh, all of Milia's choices lead to dying, is that I was perceiving that, right? Because I was, I was doubting my character. So as the doubt started piling on, I started experimenting with different characters for a while. So as time went on, I was experimenting with other characters. That number two, that switching characters was just whispering in my ear. And you, you the viewer, you might be like, wow, dude, like you're making way too big of a deal about switching characters. It's a video game. It's okay. It should be easy. It's not that big of a deal. But my response will be, actually, it's, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. I would actually follow up with, it really depends on the game that you're playing. So in some games, the baseline for the characters are actually really similar. So Dragon Ball Fighters is a really great example. So in this game, almost every character has the same basic combo. The same combo that I do with the father of Goku. It's the same combo that I could do with Goku. Is the same combo that I could do with his son, Gohan. Which is also the same combo that I could do with Gotenks, the fusion, right? So it's not like they all have the same combos, right? So for example, here is Z Broly's basic combo, quote unquote. So he can't do the same type of launchers as everyone else. So you have like this type of thing that you can do, right? You can call my assist into whatever. So the important thing is that while many characters have similar baselines, there are differentiators between the characters. but the important thing about them having the same baseline is that it's really easy to swap characters if you feel like it. This game has a very large cast of characters at this point and there is only a few exceptions. There's only a few characters on here where I would be like, oh, like this is a specialist character. Someone like Super Baby 2, Ginyu, Nappa. The majority of like the very popular characters from Dragon Ball Z are all really, really similar with similar tools differentiated between the characters of course but again this theme of similar baseline is really important there's goku there's also goku there's gt goku and then there's ui goku and there's also blue goku and there's bardock and there's vegeta a lot of these characters have very similar toolkits with very similar moves base vegeta is over here okay we can leave but in other games the characters are different in literally every single way. So Guilty Gear Strive compared to Guilty Gear Exert. A lot of these system things were changed. Like characters used to have different wake up speeds, different back dashes, where in this game, it's been kind of, these things have been made universal, right? So there's mainly three types of back dashes, three types of throws, everyone wakes up at the same time. But you can still see huge differences in ways that characters move, where they want to position themselves, what types of moves do they even have. Like Gold Lewis here, this chonky boy is jumping. So he can't actually double jump, where like Viking and can, and then her jump is higher than his, right? But then also her jump is way floatier and it's faster. He has the five frame heavy jump where she has the standard kind of four frame jump. Characters will have different back walk speeds, forward walk speeds, run speeds, 
all sorts of little differences between each other. And we haven't even talked about the differences in moves. So when you try to play a new character, it feels kind of awkward because if you have experience with a character already, then you'll be in a situation where you go, my normal character can respond like this, but this character, I'm not really sure. Maybe their button won't reach. Maybe they can't get a combo. Maybe they can't respond at all. An easy analogy to use would be like real fighting, right? So changing your character from a fighting perspective would be like, oh, uh, instead of being like a 6-1 boxer, now you're like a 5-6 boxer, but also you don't punch anymore, you only kick, and also you have to wrestle people. Like it's not like the same, like you're doing really, really different stuff. <laughs> So you can get stuck in a loop of you're not really believing your character, but also you don't have the heart to commit to another character. And that's the true demonic part about the character crisis. So what a lot of people actually do is they learn a character that they either like don't like or they think is like really meta or easy or something. So a lot of people like on the Nago or like the recent one now in Guilty Gear Strive is Bridget and they will play that character plus their main at the same time. This is fine, but depending on how much time you are spending on the new character, this method is really half-hearted and reinforces the crisis because you're not spending as much time on the new character as your main, and since you're still playing your main, you're still super emo about your main. But then also, you're not doing as well with your new character. Now for a counter pick, so a character you're picking specifically to beat other characters, this is fine. So for example, my good friend Axel Lowe, shout out to Durag, good buddy. I picked him specifically to play against Potemkin and Leo Whitefang. I wanted to also try against Nagoriyuki and Gold Lewis, but the most mileage that he put for me in tournaments were specifically Potemkin and Leo Whitefang. And then I also played Giovanna. So I played Giovanna in a couple matches as well. So Giovanna versus Ramaphal and Giovanna versus Chip. And she did the job quite well too. So again, for counter picking, this is fine. But for a new main, this is not effective at all. So that's where the character crisis can last for a really, really, really long time. And I know all this because I'm speaking from <laughs> experience. I've been through a couple of major, major character crises. Crises? 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 So speaking from a point of experience, what do we do about this? So one, you can doom about your character forever and not do anything about it. This is not the option you wanna pick. This, this shit sucks, I'm not gonna lie. That shit sucks. You're not fun to be around. You're not fun to talk to. You're definitely not fun to play. And you are just really sad. So try not to pick, just stay in the crisis. That's not the way. And then two, we just talked about it. You can learn another character. But again, if you learn a second character, I think the best way and the way that's worked the best for me is to go full switch and not pay attention to your old character that much or try not to play your old character if possible. So if you do the thing where you pick a second character, but you keep the main that you're sad about, but you keep running back to your main, especially if you're like a competitive player, uh, if the first option is stagnating, right? So you just play the character that you're like, this character sucks, blah, 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 and no one's trying to listen to you. Then this option is like, you're kind of stagnating. Like you clearly understand there's a problem. There's a problem with you in relation to your character. The, pro the character probably has legitimate problems. That's why you've gotten down uh, this rabbit hole in the first place. But like something has made you go too far, right? So you're kind of just stagnant. You recognize it, but you still keep running back to your character. That's not the way. Honestly, I think the best way is just switch, hard switch. A lot of stuff happens when you just commit to the switch. Uh, so personally, anyone is going to get a lot of heat if you're really known for a character. So you expect, especially if you're competing, whether or not you're competing, actually, your results will dip some. So like if you're playing online, you won't be beating people as easily as you were with your original character. If you're competing and you're placing at like X, Y range, like let's say you're placing from like 9th to 16th, now you're going to be placing from like 25th to 33rd or maybe worse, depending on how hard the new character is. If you're cool with that, if you accept that really easily, then you can just be like, oh, this is a learning phase. This is actually a growth phase because all the characters are different. So now you're responding to situations differently with than with your old character. Maybe the new character has like some cool thing that people haven't really investigated. There's a lot of stuff you could do when you look at the new character. The problem with the old character is you 
think the character's trash, but you have a lot of experience with them. So then you also have the thing of like, oh, I should be beating this guy, or oh, if I ran back to my old character, I would beat him. Uh, so we want to avoid that and just play the new character. It's probably the best advice I can give you. The main times I've had true, true, true serious character crisis, I've had three ever. What One when I went from Rory to Marth and SSBM, one when I went to Lychee, from Lychee to Valkenhayn and Blaze Blue, and one in this game when I went from Milia to Biken. Those are probably like my biggest. Dragon Ball, actually, I've had some problems as far as characters in that game. That probably warrants its, whole, its own video because it's about teams and stuff. But each time, the answer was just to switch and go from a growth perspective and the belief in the new character, especially because, you know, for a game like Melee, Marth is like an established top tier. He's been top tier since 2001, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> He's been top tier longer than some of you have been alive who are watching this video, right? And for Blaze Blue people, Valkenhayn, almost always top tier. And for Strive people, Strive is the reverse where uh, I was, I really, really believed in Milia when the game came out, like a lot, and no one else did. People were just like, you're wasting your time. But I was like, no. And that's how much belief can carry you forward. So the mindset is everything. Mindset is absolutely everything. Your experience with fighting games will be way, 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 way less fun and way less enjoyable for you and everyone around you if you are lost in the sauce of the character crisis so hopefully just looking at it like this helped uh as usual if you guys have any questions or comments definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below shout out to all the people doing viewer request videos on the patreon that we got going on there also instagram if you're cool with that i got an instagram you can check out instagram.com slash lord knight fgc like and subscribe if you guys feel like it and i'll see y'all next time peace out